Hi there everyone, welcome back to the channel. So for those who have been watching my previous videos some time back, you'll have seen that I've been obviously making 3D printed objects to use in Astro as well as countless other places. Uh, whether it's things like cable guides for going on the back of the cameras or this one that I'm currently messing around with on the rainy days, uh, DIY flip flap. And things like this give me you know, a prototyping just messing around, keep me occupied, and it also gives me a test bed to write ASCOM drivers and see how it can interface with things in general. Um, one of my other projects that I'm just sort of, sort of messing around with, here we've got a 250 milliliter syringe driven by a servo, and what I'm looking at here is, you know, how much pressure can this actually produce and how granular a control do I have on that pressure. But that's, uh, that's for a, another day. So anyway, 3D printing, I've got two printers. We'll just take a quick look at them now. So my first one is this desktop unit, so it's an Anycubic uh, Mega S. And then I've got this floor standing unit, which is the Anycubic Predator. Uh, this one's quite a large build volume. I think it's 370 millimeters in diameter by 450 millimeters tall. And then the any cubic, I think it's 220 by 200 by 150 or something like that is the build volume. So I've been using the printers more and more and I find that, you know, particularly with rapid prototyping, it's a pain having to wait a long time for a print to finish to find something doesn't fit. Or if I'm churning out a part and I want to try something else and my printers are both busy, and obviously I don't want to use the big Predator for small parts. It's a bit of a faff to set up particularly being the size it is and changing filaments and all that sorts of stuff. And obviously having the Mega S is great. It can quickly do some prints, but it's not quite up to the speed of modern printers. So I bought these back in late 2019. I got the Mega S and 2020, I think in February 2020 for the Predator. So they've had a good three years out of them and they've, to be honest, they've been pretty good. I haven't had to replace any nozzles. I haven't replaced the hot heads. There's been no breakdowns, so everything's worked pretty reliably. However, I felt it was time to uh, get another printer, maybe something that's more suitable to rapid prototyping, and that's where this comes in. Will we get it open? So over the last few months, there's obviously been uh, a huge flurry of new high-speed printers coming onto the market. I did consider going down the resin route. Uh, however, I decided at this time, no, I'm not ready for the mess and I couldn't be dealing dealing with it. So I decided to go with just a, another typical uh, printer and after having a look at all the various options out there, what stock availability is, what the reviews look like, uh, what the speeds of the units are, what the you know sort of the material compatibility is, whether it's PLA, PETG, ABS, you name it, I decided to go with the Bamboo Lab X1 series printer. And for the keen eyed amongst you will notice, the box says combo on it. And what that means is that I have also got the AMS unit which attaches to the printer, which is the automatic material selection I think it is. And it allows you to have four different filaments installed at the printer at the same time. And it will switch between them depending on what you're printing and what you're needing. So I've cleared a space on the desk. Let's get it open and out and put it together. have got some support for PLA, PLA CF, PLA basic. Partially filled spools, obviously sample spools. Let's get her open. Quick start guide. And inside is where this the pack the AMS unit, box of parts, little bed plates I think. Okay, so we've got to remove these two transit Allen screws which are in the box. So inside the box, power cable, spool holder, so glue stick, a hot end, 
connection cable of some sort, some safety guidelines, a display, a whole bunch of screws and clips. And two Allen keys, a nozzle cleaner, and a power cable. Release these two screws and lift out the AMS. So next, four screws in here. Okay, and lift out this carriage. A magnetic build plate. Users must use the glue stick to apply adhesive to the build surface before the first print, otherwise the print may adhere too strongly. And there you have it. Remove the foam from the poop chute, so I can put the lid back on. Then we can turn our attention to the AMS unit. Nice. To attach this into here. And now we can release the, the bed. Next we can attach the screen. Connect to the Wi-Fi. Okay, so now we need to calibrate. So we've unlocked the bed screws and we hit next and hit calibrate. Remove the foam. Calibration complete. So what I'm going to do next is we'll take the filament set sample that they've provided and we'll load that because these have the RFID tags in the printer. Uh, filament spools so it knows exactly what's going in. One thing I need to do as well is remove the des desiccants inside the AMS to keep the moisture out of your filaments when it's not being used, so to speak. So there's two of them. Next, we can put in one of the spools. So it's now loading the spool. Now the print bed's got different sides for different things, so this front side's for the PLA and then the back side is for PDG, ABS, TPU, PA and PC, whatever those are, never heard of some of them. And now we'll just put a little bit of glue stick as it says. Alright, so here we are on the desktop. I downloaded Bamboo Lab Studio from their website. I logged into my account that I used to actually buy the printer from and then I found the device and I connected that to my account and also updated the firmware to the latest version. So now if I go across to prepare, I've downloaded the 3D Benchy standard STL from uh, Prusa's website. I'll load that in and there we can see it on the build plate. And we can see how this ends up printing. So if we slice and we can have a look through the different layers at how it will print. Uh, and if I print plate it says it's going to take 39 minutes we're going to do a bed leveling we're going to run a time lapse and we're going to do a flow calibration and we've enabled the automatic material selection and it's selected the PLA so we can send this now to the printer and here we've jumped to the device tab automatically and if we start the camera you can see the camera, we've got uh, the Bamboo Lab X1 has actually got an inbuilt webcam for monitoring.
there we have it, the job's finished. So it just finished cutting the filament and spooling back the excess back into the AMS unit. And it's lowered the print bed down onto the lowest position for access through the door. So let's go and take a look at it. Okay, so it is fairly well held onto that bed, so maybe we need to wait for it to cool down, but I can always take away the magnetic sheet. And there we have it. It's come out surprisingly good. A little bit of surface defects at the front there. I did have the printer set on ludicrous mode, yeah, no, sport mode I think it's called. And then we've got the bench at the bottom, so again, just the front end there, I don't know what's caused that, maybe it's a calibration issue. But the top, the overhangs, the chimney, everything else is looking absolutely excellent. So, just that. And then around the back, here we can see everything that's been dumped out the poop chute because it's been doing the priming etc. Alright so there we have it. I thought I had set the setting for time lapse but unfortunately when I look at the SD card it doesn't show anything up. So I don't know what I did wrong there so that'll be a trial for the next one. So I guess uh, the next setting or the next decision is uh, what am I going to fill the AMS with? Take our pick. Choices. So I think what I'll do now is I'll print out one of my Astro models that I've already done, the cable guides, and see how that turns out. So uh, let's head over to the PC again. Okay, so here we are back at the PC. I've opened up my account in Tinkercad and here's one of the 90mm cable guides. So I think we'll... Uh, oh. I think we'll print this one on the bottom right. So what I can do is I can select it and then export to STL. And it's gone. So now we go across to Bamboo Lab Studio and we'll add the object. Open it in. There we go. Now the question is which filament can I use? So I've loaded a generic PLA red filament into the AMS, so I can select that now. And not uh, 0.2 millimeter thickness, very high 0.2. So let's go to print plate. And uh, we're not going to bother with a flow calibration. Oh yes, we do because we've changed the filament and bed leveling. Let's, I've got a time lapse enabled again. So we'll see what happens this time. All right, let's hit the print. So it's feeding in the new red filament and you can see the old green filament is still hanging off the hot head. And it's pushing through now. And now I can see the reds just coming through. It's just chopped off that bit of filament, let me get it. So there it is, it just spat out that filament change out the poop chute. And you can see the red and green filament stuck together there. Clever. And now it's printing the part. All right, so there's it's finished. All done. It took about I don't know, 20 minutes if that. I can't remember. I've been watching the clock. But it, all it's safe to say is that it's, uh, it's fast, faster than my other two printers, and quality is good. No issues. All the way you can swap in and out fil filaments really easily. So I guess we just need to go on and do some projects with it. So in the meantime, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. We'll catch you later.